It's time for Friday Night Flights, sponsored by Casey Auto Group, Hercules Fence, Esprit de Corps Home Furnishings, and Bayport Credit Union. A beautiful fall night for high school football, private schools, and public schools. Many celebrating homecoming, a fall tradition in Hampton Roads, and we keep it going tonight as we bring you the longest running high school football show in Virginia history, Friday Night Flights. I'm Bruce Rader, and what an honor it is for me to be with you again on a Friday night. 45 years now, and we have another great group of players and coaches again this year. And why not begin with the reigning state champions from Oscar Smith, a heavy favorite as they are every week tonight taking on Kings Fork, the Tiger Cage entrance. There is nothing like it in high school football. It's what makes it special. Kings Fork scores first and then never again. Oscar Smith. Quarterback Ethan Basco headed to Old Dominion next year. The strike to Tory Johnson. The Tigers score first, and then the floodgates would open. With the ball in the end zone, Basco to his running back out of the backfield. Kevon King. He usually runs them in tonight, but there with a touchdown catch. And how about one more highlight from the future Old Dominion player? Ethan Basco, the pump fake, the bomb to Johnson. 72 yards. Oscar Smith rolls to a 49 to 7 win. Another favorite to win a state championship, undefeated Green Run looking to win its first Beach District title in 26 years, taking on Bayside. Nathan Epstein was there. Nathan. Green Run in the white jerseys off to a 6 0 start, but Bayside 5 1 in the year doesn't want to see their rivals celebrating their first Beach District title since 95. First quarter, first drive of the Stallions. A little flip to Keelan Adams. The big six foot two sophomore isn't going down. Hugs the sideline all the way to the end zone. Stallions lead it seven to nothing. Second quarter, Bayside in the red zone, looking to tie things up. Quarterback Mike Myers picked off by Quadron Miles. The senior had two interceptions on the night. No points for the Marlins. Low scoring first half. Green run only led seven nothing heading into the locker room. Third quarter, the Stallions start running away. Xavier Davis finds Adams. He bobbles, then takes off. Adams all the way for a touchdown. Fourth quarter, the give to Christian Parham punches it in. Stallions celebrate with the Bayside Trophy, which was started five years ago. Green run 7 0 after a shutout win over their rivals. Hey, 7 0, baby. You know how we coming, bro. It was a playoff atmosphere. Um, it was just a big game. Big time players made big time plays in big time games, so it is what it is. You guys are one step closer to winning your first Beats District title since '95. How big of a win was this, and what does it mean? It's huge. Like I said, it's a rivalry game. We we look forward to this game each and every year, no matter what the records are. The records actually go out the window when they, when we when us two teams meet. So um, we're we're happy to get the victory, and we're going to move forward and prepare for next week. In Virginia Beach, Nathan Epstein for Friday Night Flights. Thanks, Nathan. Staying at the beach, Ocean Lakes at home against Salem. Both teams with two losses so far. We're going to pick it up in the fourth quarter. Salem down by four. Quarterback Jason Williams forced to scramble, runs down the sideline, takes a nice hit, keeps on going, and is tackled inside the 10. Now the very next play, senior Kymere Gatlin Carter is going to take, watch closely, the direct snap. He goes up the middle for the score and the lead. The Salem defense would step up big here, getting the safety on the very next season. Look at this. They were down by four. Now they're up by four. But we're going to take you to the final seconds of the game. Ocean Lakes going for the win. Fourth down. Quarterback lands and Sprell sprints out to the right. But the Salem defense holds, and Salem holds on to win it 14 10. Two more Beach District schools, Princess Anne and Cox. It was close in the first half, but Cox would come on strong late. The Cox defense was as tough as ever here. Duncan Wilson on the blitz, getting to the quarterback, slams him down for the sack. The defense was great all night, allowing only three points. That would give enough time for their offense to get going in the second half. Scoring 27 points, Cox wins it 27 to 3. How about some more finals from the beach? Tallwood 42 to 14 over First Colonial. The Kellum Knights 21 to 8 over Lanstown. In Williamsburg last night, unbeaten Warhill looking to win the Bay Rivers District title and its seventh game in a row. But Pocosin wasn't about to let the Lions off easy. Craig Loper was there. Craig, show us what happened. 
Thursday night at Wanner Stadium in Williamsburg. There are the Pocosin Islanders, and there are the War Hill Lions trying to move to 7-0 on the season. First quarter, the Lions pull a trick out of the bag. Toss to Liam Francisque. He's not going to run it. He's going to throw it to a wide-open Taylor Eady. No one going to catch him. 7 to nothing, just like that. After Warhill recovered a fumble, they have the ball back, and they're back in the red zone. Pitch to Deron Gordon. He sneaks in for the score. Lions jump out to a 14 to nothing lead. Second quarter now. Islanders at midfield, and they're not going away easy. Hand it off to number nine. That's Josh Barkley. And 50 yards later, he crosses the goal line, cuts the lead down to 14 to seven. That score held up until late in the fourth quarter, under a minute to play now. Islanders in their own territory, and it takes some guts to call that. How about a double pass? Jackson Wiesman to Braden Hayes, Hayes to Ron Fasquette, and he drags a defender to the five yard line. Now after being stuffed on third and goal, it's fourth and goal now. Hayes punches it in. 14 to 13, all you need to do, convert the PAT to tie the game. But oh no, the snap is off the mark. The timing forces an awkward kick. It's no good. 14 to 13, the final. The Lions are 7 and 0. It's how bad they want to control their own destiny. They're 7 and 0, 8 and 0 is going to be tough to get. But with this all, it's how bad they want to control their destiny. It's about beating the next team every single day. And not on Thursday or Friday, that starts on practice and practice. Great game there. Thank you. Undefeated Phoebus on its way to a fifth straight Peninsula District title, taking on Kikatan. Kikatan punting. Number two, Kamari Gray is back for the return, and watch him go to work up the right sideline, and he will find the end zone. That is a 56-yard return, and Phoebus takes the lead. Just three minutes later, Phoebus back with the ball, a spectacular Airborne catch by number nine, Jalen Mayo. He's in for six. And then, still in the first half, Warriors with the ball. Deep pass to Jakari Mozell. Great catch over the defender. Lies into the end zone, but Phoebus can't let things in like that. With seconds to go, a missile to Mayo in the corner. Phantoms run away with this one, 42 to 15. And when we come back, a packed house at Norfolk Academy as the Bulldogs celebrate homecoming against their arch rivals from Nansman Suffolk Academy as Friday Night Flights rolls on. Homecoming at Norfolk Academy, huge crowd and the fans were fired up. Bulldogs take it on Nansman Suffolk Academy. Scoreless in the first. Cooper Tisco to Stinson Moss from six yards out, seven to nothing, Norfolk Academy. Nansman Suffolk Academy going to answer right back. Gabriel Wansart deep to George Petaway. 39 yard touchdown. Petaway going to North Carolina next year. What a game he had. Second quarter. The option goes to who else but George Petaway. Six yard touchdown run. NSA takes a 20 to 7 lead, but Norfolk Academy not going away. Cooper Tisco, the bomb to Ian Fitzgerald, 37-yard touchdown. York Academy, though, still down 20 to 14. Near the end of the first half, NSA's Gabriel Wansart, 18-yard strike to Jaden Freeman. What a throw! What a catch! Nansman Suffolk Academy holds off Norfolk Academy, 42 to 37, and a wild shootout on homecoming in Norfolk. Brian Parsons for Friday Night Flights. Thank you, Brian. And Chesapeake Grassfield hosting Great Bridge. Both teams in search of their first win. This would be all Grassfield tonight. Already up 21-6 in the third. Ethan Barham to Elijah Knees making a man miss. And he's into the end zone. And Grassfield would just keep it going. This time they are in the red zone. Marcus Lawton breaks several tackles on his way to score. Grassfield knocks off Great Bridge tonight. How about Churchland? Churchland having a great year, trying to rebound from last week's setback against Mari at home against Lake Taylor. The Titans needing a win to get back over the 500 mark. It was homecoming there for the truckers. Everybody ready for a good night. There's your homecoming queen. The truckers up at halftime, but Lake Taylor looking to stop their momentum. Aaron McDaniel looking to throw. Read like a book by Churchland's Brandon Hillman. He takes it all the way back for a score. A big pick six to start the third quarter. 
Churchland is going to come on offense now, and Hillman looking to pass, but hey, no, he's going to take it himself. A little shake and bake right into your living room. 45 yards for a touchdown, looking to extend the lead for the truckers. Sheldon Carter doesn't quite make it through the gap, but his teammates have his back, and they're going to push him across the goal line for the six. Churchland with a 56 to 36 shootout win over the Titans. There she is, the queen. Four and one Booker T at home against its old rivals from Norcom. Darian King, the player of the week last week, finds the gap up the middle. The Bookers will turn on their offense. Now Frederick Fuller dropping back, looking to make a difference. He finds Paul Clark, tight coverage, but he makes the snag, ties the game. And then, again, Fuller, watch this time. He's going to scramble in the pocket. He's going to look deep. Come on, throw it, throw it. He does. But wait, it's picked off by Norcom's Jaden Ratliff. Norcom, the Greyhounds, their first win of the year. 21-18, a thriller over Booker T. Let's wrap things up. I'm going to take you to Packer country. Smithfield at home against the Tab Tigers with a great defensive performance, but they also scored a lot. Tyrell Alexander punching it in at the goal line, and here's that Tab defense. Nice pick by Connor Castle as Tab moves towards the shutout. Now, Smithfield did have a couple of good plays on offense, though. Chris Dennis moving through traffic for a very nice game right there. And then, how about a nice reception by Amari Jones? He's going to get control of the ball and turn it into a huge game. But another pick by the defense as Tab would go on to win it tonight, 21 to nothing. Always need good D. Western Branch, 56 to 13 winners over Hickory. Nansman River with a 21 to 14 win over Deep Creek. Indian River, 40 to 26 over Lakeland in a shootout in Suffolk. And Minchville gets past Gloucester, 41 to 3. Warwick shuts out Heritage tonight, 18 to nothing. And check out this score. Lafayette upset by King William. 61 to 42. Rare to see that happen to an Andy Lynn team. Grafton falls to New Kent 48 20. Surrey County. How about the Cougars? 50 point winners over Windsor. Southampton loses a tough one to Greenville 14 to 12. Seven weeks of high school football in. But still plenty of action to come before the playoffs. This week's Washington Huddle on Fox 43 coming up after the news, which is after the Red Sox Astros game. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night.